BAM! With a sneak attack. You know I'm back. A D6 damage? How about that? Now today, we're going to be talking about the rogue, about the thief. An author requested video to go in my collection on my channel of class exploration videos for Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and to heighten your experience and to get to know these classes just a little bit better than you did when you walked in the door here on your main man speaks. Now, I'm going to speak to you, and I'm going to speak to you about the origins of these classes, how to do them, the soul of flavor, uh, and how they come about. Uh, before we get into that, let me give a plug. My man Blythe Barnes, go check his channel out, like his videos, watch his videos, subscribe to his channel. He sent your main man this hat some time ago, a uh, free Dungeons and Dragons black hat that I'm wearing right now. Uh, and I might wear it again in the future. You don't know what I'm going to do. Let me start off by saying this about the Thief to the Rogue. In between AD and first edition and 3.0, no class changes the soul, the theme, the, the, the play style, more of that class than the Thief to the Rogue in, in 3.0. What you had in AD and D was, it was, it was a filthy Bagginses. It was, uh, Malik from Conan the Destroyer. He was a little weasel, uh, a, a scapegoat, a Nardu well, a man of, uh, poor moral character or fiber, or perhaps some cowardliness in the spirit that he had to attempt to overcome, to, to, to persevere at a very, very interesting character in a lot of ways. We see that completely. Completely change in 3.0. You you go from Baggins and Malik to playing something out of Assassin's Creed. There's a very video game feel to it. You are in fact a better fighter than a uh, a fighter. And just remember, your main man, like Jesse Ventura, is I'm a fighter. And I think I know a thing or two about the fight. And that's right. We're going to talk about why that is uh, coming up in the 3.0 portion of our lecture here for you out there in YouTube land. Let's start at the AD&D &D first edition. AD&D &D first edition, you've got a whole plethora of skills. The problem was all your skills were the same. And regardless of what you did, how well you did it, between first and second to third to fourth, everything went up the same for every character regardless. Initially, at the beginning, these were modified by your uh, stats. They're modified by your dexterity. I don't know if there was any modification via intelligence. There certainly should have been. I'm not sure about that. Someone could probably leave that in the comments below. Now, I think the uh, I think there's one I'm missing here, but let's see. We have, uh, and I haven't looked this up. This is all off memory from like a long time ago. This is forever since I played an AD and D uh, rogue of any kind. But you had move silently, hide in shadows. You had open locks, find or move traps. You had um, climb walls, pickpockets. And uh, what's what's the language one called? Uh, I think I just said it too, didn't I? But the uh, decipher script. You you had all those, and maybe there's one more in there. I'm not sure. I really do think there's one more in there. Was it uh, making traps? I, I don't know. Anyway, those skills all had percentiles. They were on the D100 system, which meant you wanted to roll a zero one. That was your optimal. That was your critical success. The zero one. Double off was going to pretty much always be a failure. Although you could actually have a skill that extended past 100 with modifiers. You got the modifiers off your skill, off your uh, stats. You also had modifiers racially based, which is the thing I really like. Helps differentiate a half elf from a half orc, from an elf, from a halfling, from a gnome, from a dwarf to a slightly different degree. Of course, humans are a baseline, no racial modifications there, but it helps to give you a little something different to help make the half orc thief a little different than the elf thief, a little different than the, uh, the dwarf thief. Which, after all, when you have that uh, set of numbers, it continues to increase at the exact same rate. Any way to make that different is a bonus. And we see that difference continue on in second edition. Now, uh, in second edition, so we'll just talk about that skill core for right now. They changed it. You started with a base, the same, same way in first edition you had a base. But, like, you had a base of climb walls of 60%. Which means, if you rolled under a 60%, you succeeded. Now, this also needs to be said, there should almost always be a modifier. It's like, okay, I got 60%. Yeah, but roll with a minus 5% 5, 5 chance. Roll with a plus 7% chance, depending. If, if you're going up something that's sloped, you know, like that, well, it might be a hard, a little bit of a hard climb, but you might be like, there, plus 38%. You know, it's not the same thing as going straight up, right? Uh, you're not, and you cert, something you just can't do, period. You know, certainly without at least some aid, you're not Spider-Man. doesn't matter if you have a 110. You, you can't go up a, a sheer flat building. You know, you just couldn't do that. that that's beyond uh, your capacities. But, you know, if you have some pythons, if you have 
uh, sort of rope pulley system so forth you could do that uh, those are things that can be very helpful you can remember in real life a lot of people have tremendous fear of heights many people won't even get on a roof with a, with a very low pitch certainly not a lot of people get on a roof with a high pitch something i have to know a lot about and uh, i can assure you the climb and balance skills are not things that everyone naturally has and if you think about it you will see that those are in fact quite obviously skills and it was a skill to help to make the, the thief important to set up he had a lot of little space time one great thing about the thief in these editions was he had a lot of okay i'm going to do me things. i'm going to sneak off and i'm going to explore this area i'm going to go and i'm going to pick this pocket he has a lot of ability to have solo time that can be a good thing but it can also be a double-edged sword because you get to really annoy other players if you're running off constantly pulling a gm off constantly doing something over here constantly doing this constantly doing that uh, continuously reinforcing your own agenda. The thief was also very good at taking stuff from other party members. He could pull the ring off your finger, take the earring out of your ear, he could take the hat off your head, and uh, you might not uh, know it all. And for PvP, if he instigated, he was a horror. He'd just come up behind you and just put the knife right in your back, and you got you got backstabbed. You don't think you're afraid. You knew he was there. That doesn't matter. <laughs> and he and he. Uh, uh, drive the blade right in your spine, and you're like half dead. Then he, then he's the one you beating you down. So that that was always a, an interesting thing. It was no, no one was easier to get a backstab off on than your party. Uh, now that certainly is not something that should come into play very often, and you don't want to play a thief to be uh, some sort of tremendous disruption in games. But I do bring that up because I have seen that transpire on more than one occasion. Never to your main man, but uh, to other unfortunate individuals. I, I, I can say I, I would never. Associated one end or the other with that, but I have seen that come into play for uh, more than one occasion, and it is certainly there. And what's there is what we're going to talk about here. So, you know, but in AD and D, you had those baseline of stats, and then you got to modify them with a certain number of points per uh, per level. You get another amount of points, and then you put them into what you train, so it made more uh, realistic sense to the game. Have you been doing well with pickpockets? Have you been learning climb walls? Add those points in. Uh, have you not done anything? With, uh, with fine traps, well, you can't put any points in there. It has to make sense. That's how we maintain and achieve and continue to push the envelope of immersion. Remember, push towards making it real. You'll never get it real, but the closer you come, the more you're going to enjoy it. The more the experience is going to stay with you, linger, and play upon uh, the, the, the mental space of your mindscape. So let's look at what else the, the AD and D thief has. He's a D6 hit points every level. You go, well, that's not very impressive. But his hit points are a little misleading because in AD and D classes did not level at the same rate. Think about that for a minute if you never played AD and D. You could have an Unearthed Arcana Barbarian who was still first level while someone had a third level rogue. No, you both have the same experience. Unearthed Arcana Barbarian takes four grand in XP to hit second level because the class is sick. A thief like that he goes up. I believe it's fastest at every single level. Druid might beat it at a couple of levels. Druid is very weird. It went up really fast at certain points, slow at others, and really slow uh, towards a home stretch. I mean, he, he he like a he like a sprinter trying to run a marathon. He just tapped out. Druid was tapping out by the end, baby. He took a lot of XP to bring it over to one level. But the thief had that advantage. That meant he was always going to be whatever his saving throws were. He was going to hit those saving throws quicker. Whatever his uh, uh, bonus weapon proficiencies, novel proficiencies, whatever his bonus thaco was, whatever his hit points were. He was going to hit all that quicker than he otherwise would. So you couldn't really sit there and compare a paladin to a thief level per level because the thief was going to be edging him by like at least a level. Sometimes he might be edging him by two levels, which meant for a substantial increase in his power. He had more levels. And as we all know, levels indicate a lot of power in any role-playing game. That's essentially what a level is. It's here's how much power you have per your profession, per your occupation, per your class. Now, the thief also has something called a backstab. Now, for those of you who have never seen a backstab, no, a backstab and a sneak attack are almost nothing alike. A backstab is, woo, by God, the dirtiest player in the game. That's right, the dirtiest player in the game called RPGs, D D. AD and D, we're talking about the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, 16 time world heavyweight champion. There ain't a better thief going than that man. Watch the Ric Flair match and you will see how you should set up your, your backstabs and so forth. 
No, 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 you're down there begging. And he's going right to the eyes, you poke him, you know. You, you, you chop him in the throat, you take the eyes in the buckle, you get him there, you give him the old trip knee right to the groin, you give him the, the uppercut there, and then you chop him. And that, that's how you're doing the sneak attack. It's a dirty tactic. It's, it's, uh, throwing some, some, uh, cow chops on the ground, just throwing sand in their face. Use the environment around you to help, uh, uh facilitate that, that, that sneak attack. If there's a sun, get it so they're circling right in the stair, right into the sun. Use all those kind of tactics. And damn, don't see if your game master don't, don't work with you a little bit and hook a brother up with a sneak attack from time or with a, with a backstab from time to time. Backstab was hellacious damage. Uh, you know, it was like a multiplier of your damage. So you could just, you could just destroy things when you hit it. Typically though, it took a lot to set up. So we've created a role playing opportunity inside of combat. You're like, okay, I'm going to sneak around. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get behind them. I'm going to lay back and the party goes in there. And just when they don't suspect it, boom, that's when I, when I come out of the trees, you know, I dive off the tree with my sickle right to the back of his neck. You know, I'm going to use uh, my hide and shadows to come up here. So it really made your move silently and hide and shadows far more valuable skills. And after all, you're always getting a bonus in combat when you use those skills. There's a lot of noise in combat. If you and me are facing off, I'm about, I'm about to kill you with a back scratcher of doom. And it does a D4 of damage, plus 9. That's right, it's a plus 9 back scratcher. You're not paying attention to whatever minor sound is around behind you. Someone because you be walking normal behind you will probably will probably slip up on you. But when someone has subtlety and grace, oh boy, they're, they're getting on you. They're I mean, I would give somebody in a combat in most combat situations almost like almost like just don't roll a double odd and you're probably gonna catch them. People they're 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 just not even where are you looking? Are you looking behind you? Well, I'm gonna kill you then. <laughs> you know, you've just given given me who is the fighter or whatever the car blast to slit that throat. And remember, just like Jesse Ventura. I'm a fighter. Uh, so, Barbarian Horde, when you're out there, when you're thinking about what your main man yells from the top of the mountain down to your eardrums, uh, think about that. Think about the style and how you're setting up that backstab, how you're bringing authenticity to it, how you're making it awesome. Make Ric Flair proud and be the dirtiest player in your game when you're playing that dirty-ass rogue. At some point, I am going to play a dirty-ass rogue for you people to see. I got the anti paladin now. I'm gonna bring a, I'm gonna bring a wizard out there in one of these games. I wanna show you guys, you know, just bring it through immersive style. How we do this character, how we do this character, how we do this character to, to show you guys, you know, my, my take, not just pontificating, but to bring it home in an actual role playing sense. It's like, alright, well here, here's how I do it. So you can watch and you can gauge and go, okay, I can watch, take this and that, or whatever. But the dirty thief, the filthy bastard of RPGs is gonna be in there at some point. So, uh, when we, when we look at that, 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 that sneak attack, uh, was very interesting. And the fact that you leveled so quickly was, it was a very interesting thing. It really made the class feel different. But you weren't standing there toe to toe against a fighter. You would not stand there face to face against a fighter. You wouldn't do that. That'd be crazy. Right? Just like in real life, if you're like a dude wearing some flimsy leather armor and you got like a dagger, why would you stand there against a guy with a two handed sword? Like Malik wasn't like, hey Conan, just smack him in the mouth like he was a chunk. And then it was on. They wouldn't have fought like that. Conan would have cut him in half, right? You know, you don't see Bilbo walking up and just smack his strider right in the eye. And you're like, well, it's good. You understand? They didn't do that. And there's a reason for it. Because they weren't the best melee class out there. So when we look at uh, 3.0, 3.5, uh, even the Pathfinder, but we'll touch a little more on Pathfinder later, I think. The class transmogrified. It's a badass. A rogue is a badass. When you tell somebody in ADD you're playing a rogue, you're like, oh, when you tell somebody in that, you're like, ooh, this dude could do 97 damage at like 7 levels. You know, he was an assassin. He was an acrobatic assassin murder machine of mayhem. He feels very much like a video game type character. Uh, one great thing about 3rd edition is you don't have to have the same skill. You can even buy on some levels of rogue just to be a character that has larger amounts of skills. You're like, well, I see my character concept make it says to have more skills. I don't want move silently hiding shadows, finding traps. I don't want any of that. You know, I want extra skills, extra uh, skills so I can put some cooking or survival or whatever it is. Boom! You grab that eight times intelligence. You're going to have a load of skills to pick up and choose from, which can really help to render a character concept that has a higher uh, skill point threshold and must be met, which is a nice part of the character. 
you know, you can use it in and out there. And you don't really have to play a rogue to play a rogue. They have sneak attack, which is incredibly different than backstab. Sneak attack, you can get off like that. Once you have a few levels on your road, you may well be able to hit it every single round. There are ways you can hit sneak attack with a few levels of rogue every single round, or damn near every single round. That greatly changes. Again, what do we do? We took three rounds have to set up our backstab. That's a gamble. We're hitting our, our sneak attack almost every single round. That means you're doing a ton of damage. You can stand there against the fighter. Now, if you're going to have less hit points in the fighter, you're probably not going to have as good an armor class. But, <laughs> he don't do anywhere near as much damage as you. They call them strikers, which, again, you know how fond I am of those kind of names. I don't want to make concept characters, guys. But, you know, for me, I, I like role-playing. <laughs> Having characters that uh, that uh, I actually remember the names of. Who would have thought? But, enough of that. When when, when we look at that, 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 that sort of character. We are not making double backers. We're not making Malice. We're making a brutal, vicious bastard. And one thing that was very difficult for my immersion there is they have better tactics than fighters. Fighters on a military battlefield should have the best tactics there are. The tactics of a soldier versus the tactics of some drug dealer, uh, you know, who has a gun. Boy, I think that soldier is going to have much better tactics. And they'll go, hey, what's the soldier? I think it's like a fighter level. Thus negating your rebuttal. So when you when you look at that, uh, the fighter really is the one that should be getting you bonuses from flanking people, from using combat tactic maneuvers, not the thief. The thief shouldn't be doing that. The thief should be begging off, should be working that coward drop. He's a heel from professional wrestling. That's what the thief is. Watch pro wrestling, dude. You could do some great stuff. You know, break the back, uh, low blow the man, then chop him in the chest, gouge the eyes, rip the ears, fish hook him. That's a thief. Oh, that's cool. That's cinematic style. Throw the salt in the eyes with the Fuji style. There's a ton of stuff you could do. You know, a thief may well be best personified as a, as a heel manager in professional wrestling. The fighter is, is, is a big guy. You're not playing Road Warrior Hawk. You're playing uh, Skandar Akbar throwing fire at a man. You're playing uh, Playboy Gary Hart. You know, you're playing Bobby the Brain Heenan. And you're playing the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Or James A. Dillon. You understand? You're not playing Sid Vicious. You're not playing Hulk Hogan. You're not playing Big John Kent of the Earthquake. No, 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 no. You're a dirty, despicable individual. And you gotta get in that mindset. When the, the, the sneak attack, while it is awesome, I'm not gonna say it's not awesome, come up and knock somebody in the head for 89 damage every turn. I'm not gonna say, you know, there's not uh, something to be said for having the two, uh, uh, weapons and. <laughs> Just annihilating people. It's like, I'm a fighter with 100 hit points. Ha <laughs> ha! Not after the first rounds, you are. You're dead now. Because I just sorted you out with bids of despair. That can really make an important difference. You are, in that version, a hellacious assassin monster of death dealing. The stick attack changes the game tremendously. It changes the feel, the flavor, and the soul. You might like that flavor better, but you might not. And if you haven't seen the AD&D style, I'm going to give that a try. It, uh... It really produces a very different character, one you might find a lot of fun. I particularly found female game, gamers really seem to like those old AD and D style of rogues. And it does involve a lot of thinking. It involves a lot of spotlight. It involves a, a lot of um, of planning and using the environment around you as opposed to just running up and I I, I flank. I flank him. Am I flanking? Can I flank him? Am I flanking him? I flank him. I, I attack him. If you get attack, I attack him. I get attack him. I attack him. You know, it gets stagnant and boring, and I've, I've seen people, like, be on the verge just wanting to strangle somebody playing a rogue. Can I, can I kind of flank him, 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 kind of flank him. Uh, it gets annoying. And again, every time you ask that question, it brings up that little uh, bubble in the mind. Why are you better at flanking people in combat tactics than the soldier over here? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It really just doesn't. I'm sure someone's going to try to justify it. When I bring logic and reason, there's always someone that hey, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's look at it in Pathfinder. I believe Pathfinder jumps up to uh, D8 hit points, and uh, I think they give Rogue a couple of extra abilities. I don't think they got as many extra abilities as some classes did, but I believe at just about every level, there's something else on there for the Rogue. Uh, D8 hit points is uh, 
is unlocked. I think in the Conan D20 RPG, I think they're also at a D8 at this point. There are some versions with those rogues you can also bump the sneak attack damage from a D6 up to a D8 per instant. There are ways to, to take, if you have multiple thief classes, you can stack them together. There's, there's feats you can take to get extra sneak dice damage or extra, um, you know, whatever. And you can do some horrifying amounts of sneak attack. I mean, you can, I think in Conan, I think you can get like 3D8 sneak attack at first level. Not kidding. Uh, so all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, and I don't really know about that one too much. I'm like, because I played in uh, Conan, I'm like, that doesn't seem like rogues in Conan. But okay, whatever. They certainly wanted to give some advantage actually running around with no armor on or very limited armor because we see that so much in Sword and Sorcery. Like, why isn't everyone running fighting it? So there needs to be some sort of mechanical justification. I can argue on both sides. I kind of have a harder time arguing over on the sides of insane amounts of damage. Uh, but again, I guess insane amounts of damage do make more sense when you have tremendous hit point escalation. Then it gets to the point of almost being uh, superhero -y. And again, if you guys out there know, I do not like superheroes in my fantasy RPG. I want grim and gritty. I want dark and dirty. I want vile and violent. That's what I want. I don't want <laughs> like Street Fighter. I don't want it to be Street Fighter 2. <laughs> Our energy bars go down. There's no registered effect. Oh, look, Ken looks completely straight. Oh, there's Ryu. He looks straight, too. And maybe the very end is somehow. No, no, no. There needs to be a slow, actual accumulation of showing certain things inside uh, before we get to that horrible, uh, eventual, grim, grisly demise and the fall of the loser. So, when you're playing, when you're playing those rogues, uh, they have a lot to offer. You, know, you might be a master of a phrase or disguise or escaping balls, a Harry Houdini type. Harry Houdini is a rogue. So you can uh, look at more than just, I'm a killing machine of death, assassin's creed style. There's so many concepts you can take, you know, a drug dealer, a fence on the street, uh, an individual who is a, a cat burglar, or uh, it's like a story man, I guess they call him as well, a pickpocket, a small child, like a character who's a pickpocket, whatever you want to go with. Their um, thief, just in itself, the rogue in itself, has a tremendous amount of possibility. Often people just uh, bring that possibility to one word, and that word is damage. It doesn't make any sense in my mind that they're the horrifying striker, damage dealer of a group. I think that there's a lot of value there. And when you bring that up, when you dig in that concept, there's a lot of really interesting things you can do when you play a rogue. And I encourage you, when you're out there, when you play that rogue, to do interesting things, to do neat stuff, to play a character that is, is more than just, eh. Play a character that's cool. Play a character that's interesting. Play a character that people remember. You know, you can, you, you can be brave and brazen or bold, or you can be cowardly and craven. And uh, the absolute best, again, the best thing I can tell you for using those dirty tactics in a fight Watch some, watch some bad guys in pro wrestling. I'm not saying nowadays. Like, look at like late 80s, late 80s, 90s stuff when the guys could really work, when the heels could really get heat. And you could see some wonderful tactics, man. Uh, and use those tactics in a game and see if the game is unpopular. Oh, that was cool. You know, you salt in the eye, you, you poke him in the eye with the thumb, whatever it was. I can really bring across a really interesting character. So, that's been your main man. Check out my uh, shop for t shirts and hats for Within the Ring of Fire. For other items within Ring of Fire, you get you get the poster side map, you can get all that stuff. We're gonna have big more updates on the game coming soon. So thank you for watching. This has been my take on thieves. Leave your take in the comment box below.